My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 81. Turn to it, page 81, the very first one that you see there, 124. After having watched this video, if you find it helpful, if you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at Kishwani Prep, that's P R E P, at iCloud.com. Not just for GMAT, I don't know why you'll be watching this video if you're preparing for GRE or SAT or ACD or anything else that you see there. Let's look at the very first problem. Before we get into the problem itself, before we get into the first problem 124, if you are one of those people who is still who is still confused with the concept of millions and billions and trillions, if you still get, sometimes get confused, I would recommend that you watch this video. Search for, always put my name in the search, whichever topic you're looking for, search, so type in Keshwani Basic Math Day 22. Keshwani Basic Math Day 22, where we will learn millions and billions and trillions which is what we're dealing with here. It says that we had a milk production in 2007 we were told that it's, we had 780 million pounds. Pay attention here, it is 280 million pounds. They're going to say that in seven years time in 214 the production was 2.7 billion pounds. The question simply is approximately how many more gallons we have. This is gallons. This is, this is gallons which is why they gave us the conversion. They gave us the conversion this is given in the problem, we don't have to know this thing, this is given in the problem that one gallon equals 8.6 pounds and they're looking for approximate which is also very important. Let's begin. First thing first, 2.7 billion pounds, 2.7 billion, if you want to convert it, we know that there are 100 million in 1 billion, in 1 billion. There are 100 million, 1,000 million rather, 1,000 million in 1 billion. So there you go, there we get rid of the billions and we convert it in million. 2.7 times 1000 is 2700 million. Let's put that there. 2.7 billion we just found out. It's simply, it's simply 2700 millions. Now we can do our work. Now we can begin our work. As we can clearly see, we have gone from 2700 to not, from, from, from 980 to 2700. 2,700, 980, we're going to pretend, we're going to pretend that 980 is approximately 1,000. So it's a difference of 1,700. 1,700 pounds, all we have to do is convert, all we're being asked here is to convert 1,700 pounds into gallons. Let's do this, shall we? Now before we do that, whenever they're asking, whenever the question uses the word approximate, that's whenever, whenever the question uses the word approximate, that is their subtle way of saying, Look at the answers. That's what they are trying to say here. It's, they're trying to tell you, before you put in the work into it, before you invest your time into it, look at the answers, which is what we're going to do here. The answer choices are 100, 200, 1700, 8200, and 14800. As you can see, the answers are nowhere close to each other. Answers are nowhere close to each other, especially once we get to C, D, and E. It jumps from 2,000 to 8,000 to 15,000. That will determine how much work we put into it. Do you understand? We don't have to be very accurate. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's begin. So we already established that it's 1,700 pounds, and we know that it's 8.6 pounds per gallon. Seven, 1,700 pounds divided by 8.6 pound per gallon. Now as you can see, it's pounds are going to cancel out and we're going to have it in gallon. And that's all we have to figure out here. Let's multiply top and bottom by 10. Let's multiply top and bottom by 10 so we can get rid of this 8.6. So what we end up is 17,000. 17 and two zeros here and one more zero. But I'm going to write that as this, 17,000 over 86. Okay, stay with me in this story. Let's divide top and bottom. Let's start, divide top and bottom by two. We're going to get 43 and a thousand is going to become five hundred. As you can see there's not much we can do here, seventeen hundred is a prime number, forty three is a prime number, these are all by design which is why they're asking for approximate. What we have to realize at this point is that ten times forty three 
10 times 43, I don't know why I'm writing it down, you know what they said, that, that's 430. If we were to add another 430, another 43 to it, it will simply be 430 plus 70, it's going to be 470 approximately, which is 11 times, which is 11 times, 11 times 43. This quantity is 11 times 43, approximately, a little bit more than that. 11 times 17, or even 10 times 17, even if you were to go with 10 times 17, 10 times 17 is not 100. And 10 times 17, 10 times 17 is definitely not going to give you 17, 1700. That's 100 times 17. You see? And it's obviously not 8,000 or 15,000. And if you want to do it out, if you feel a little bit safe, and if you want to do it out, we can do it out. 43, 500 has approximately 11, 11, 11 43s into it, right here. Which is why it's a plus sign on top of it that to remind us that we are actually underestimating it. It's a little bit more than 11. A little bit more than 11. Let's do it out here. 17 times 11. 11 times 7 is 77. 7 carries 7. 11 times 1 is 11 plus 7 is 11. There you go. 187. And a little bit more than that. We're looking for an answer. We're looking for an answer. A little bit more than 187. This is your guy. This, this is our guy. Number 125. Number 125. The next problem on the page. Oh, next problem. Next problem is a work time problem. In the same series, in the same series, basic math series I'm talking about, in the same series, basic math series that I have on my channel, if you look for work time problems, you will find 15 of them in a set of, not 15 con consecutive numbers, but there are a set of three, set of, set of threes, five in each, easy, medium, and hard. Just, just search for Keshwani and then put, them, put down Keshwani and work time problem in case you need more practice with the work time problems. Let's see what we have here. 125. It says that we have four machines, four machines, can produce X units in six days. Question is how many machines are needed to produce 3x units, 3 times the amount of work. We're making x units before, we're given 3 times the amount of work. 3x units in 4 days. So essentially we're given 3 times the amount of work and less amount of time. Instead of 6 days, we have to do it in 4 days. Let's do it together, shall we? Here we go. Here's the solution. So we know 4, four can make x units in six days. Okay, stay with me in this story. It's important that you stay with me in this story. If if you can think of these things, you can think in think of this problem in terms of machines, or you can think of it in terms of people. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to go back and forth. It doesn't matter. If four people can make X units, if four can make X units in six days, if you ask the four four same four people to do it in one day, or rather, if you ask the same amount of work, if you ask the same amount of work to be done in one day, if four machines can do it in six days, instead of six days, if you want to get it done in one day, you're going to have six times the amount of machine. You're going to take, you're going to need six times the amount of machines to do the same amount of work, same amount of work, in just one day. On top of that, on top of that, the next thing is, we're not doing the same amount of work. We're doing three times the amount of work. So now, if you want, if you want three times the amount of work to, to be done in one day, you're going to need three times the amount of machine. But fortunately for us, we don't have one day, we actually have four days. We actually have four days. And since we have four days, we're going to take one fourth the amount of machine. The more time you have, the fewer machines you need. They are inversely proportional. These were directly proportionals. 
These were also the day and the and, and, and the and the machine was also inversely proportional. The fewer days you have, the more machine you need. The amount of work and the machine are they are, they are, they are directly proportional. The more work you have, more machine you need. The fewer days you have, the more machine you need. So you have to understand which one is inversely proportional, which one is directly proportional. Here they are inversely proportional. The more time you have, the fewer machines you need. That's it, we are done. Four cancel down, the answer is 18. How many machines do we need? 18. That's all. So that was one way of doing it. On the way, on the way we could have on the way we could have done that is this way. We can write down machines, units, and days. And it's not on the way actually, it's not on the way, it's just a faster way. It's the same way, but instead of writing everything out, we set it up as a proportion. So here we go. We know we have four machines, we have to make X units, and we have six days. Okay, so let's begin. Instead of six days, if you only have one day, if you only have one day with the same amount of work, we're gonna need we're gonna need six times the amount of machine. I'm gonna write line up the four. There we go. In the next line, we don't have we don't have x unit, we have three x units. If you have three x units to be done in one day, you're gonna need three times the amount of machine. But fortunately for us. Fortunately for us, we don't have one day, we actually have four days. If we have four days to do 3x amount of work, we're going to need one fourth the machine because we have four days, we can take our time. There we go, 18 of them. Do you understand? That's all it is. Now in the real exam, in the real exam, I wouldn't even have gone this far. I wouldn't waste my time writing it out like this. You can do it all in one step. You can do it all in one step. We have four machines, and we have X units to make, and we have we have six days. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. Let's begin. Instead of six days, instead of six days, if you only had one day, we would need six times the amount of machine. Instead of X units, if you need to make three X, we need three times the amount of machines. Instead of one day, if you have four days, we need one fourth time. There you go. And that's all it is. Number 126. Once, once you have a little practice and once you know what you're doing, these problems actually go very fast. They don't take 5-10 minutes. Besides, you don't have 5-10 minutes in the exam. Number 126 says, symbol, this symbol here, represents one of four basic operations basic four basic arithmetic operations four basic arithmetic operations being the addition subtraction multiplication and division and that's what this symbol represents which for which one of these four symbols this symbol represents we do not know that yet here's they tell you which of the following must be true it says which of the following, which of the following must be true if, if we are told that 6 triangle 3 is less than or equal to 3. This is the condition we have to fulfill to figure out which four of these, which four of these operations this symbol represents. Let's find out, shall we? So let's start with addition 6, 6 plus 3, 6 plus 3 Obviously, it's not less than or equal to nine. Uh, less, it's not less than or equal to three. So that does not work. Similarly, let's do the next one. Six minus three. Six minus three. Ah, that does work. Six minus three is three, and three is less than or equal to three. So that does that does work. So possibly this can represent the the, the, the subtraction, but we know this symbol does not represent addition. Addition does not work. Let's continue. 6 times 3 is not going to work if it's not less than it is not less than 3. It does not, it's not it doesn't it doesn't represent addition or multiplication rather, but it does represent division. It does represent division. 6 divided by 3 is less than or equal to 3. That does work. 
So this symbol that we see here represents either subtraction or division. Now we have to look at the three, uh, three statements that they gave us, one, two, and three, and we should figure out which one of those three statements must be true. Not may be true sometimes, but must be true all the time, which means it must satisfy both of these conditions. It has to work for subtraction and it has to work for division. Let's find out. Number one says, number one says, two triangle two equals zero. Well, it will work for subtraction. We can clearly see two minus two equals zero. It, it does work. We don't have to write it out to see that it works. But two divided by two does not equal zero. So statement one, it's not, it's not something that has to be true all the time. I, I erase it. The word that they use or which of the following must be true. It will be true in this case, but it will not be true in the case of the division. The statement one is false. Let's look at statement two. Statement two says two triangle two equals one. Two minus two does not equal one. It does not work for subtraction, but it will work for division. It, it does work for division, but it doesn't work for subtraction, but it has to work for both of them. So second statement is not true. Let's look at third statement. Third statement says, four triangle two equals two. And we know, we know four minus two does equal two. It works for subtraction and it, and it does so also for division. Four divided by two is also two. It works for division also. So the answer is, which of the following must be true? The answer is only three, only three. Which is answer choice C. Number 127. Let's see what 127 has to say. We are in the second column now. Second column says, that m times n, m times n, we are told, their product is not zero. The question simply is, how much is 12 times n over m equal to, if, if we are told, 25% of n equals 37.5% of n, of n. Let's do it out, shall we? Let's start then. 25% of n, 25% is just one fourth, so n over four, that's 25%. Or if you like, we can write it separately if it makes you feel comfortable. 25% is one fourth, and off means time, n equals 37 and a half percent. 37 and a half percent. Percent means out of 100. Out of 100. But instead of writing it 37 and a half like that, let's put it in decimal percent, which, which means out of 100, off means time, n. Are you with me so far? Let's multiply top and bottom, this quantity here, top and bottom by 10. Let's multiply top and bottom by 10 so we can get rid of this decimal and the bottom will become 1000. And this is 1 over 4, n. Now we can begin our story, okay? We're going to begin our story and see what we can do. And if, if, it makes, if it makes it easier for you, you can write this 1,000. You can write this 1,000 as 100 times 10. 100 times 10. Let's begin, shall we? Let's start. Let's, let's multiply both sides. Let's multiply both sides by 4. Multiply both sides by 4 like that. And this 4 is going to cancel out. And this 4 is going to go with 100. and becomes 25. Are you with me? Let's divide, let's divide top and bottom by, let's divide top and bottom by 25. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. 25 is going to go away. 37 has 125. 37 has 125, and this is where you have to pay attention. 37 has 125. After we take away 25 from 37, we have a remainder of 12. What happens to the 12? 12 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 5 25s. Now, if you did not follow, if you did not follow, we just just here. I'm going to do it here on the side so we can follow me. Just do it on the side. Same exact thing. 375 
and we're dividing it by 25. Okay, follow my, follow as I speak. 37, 37 has 125. 37 has 125. After we take away 25 from 37, we have a remainder of 12. We have a remainder of 12. What happens to the 12? After we take away 25 from 37, we have a remainder of 12. What happens to the 12? That 12 goes and joins the 5. That 12 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 525. I shouldn't have put that line there. 125 has 525s. Voila. That's how we got the 15 there. Let's pick up the store, pick up the speed a little bit here. 10 goes into this thing two times and 15 goes there. So it's 3 over 2. It's 3 over 2. Let's start from the top now. Now I'm going to redo it, what we just did here, I'm going to redo it because to do it in a babyish way like I just did, it was 1000. It can be both N. One was N and one is M. This is M. Because it's 37 and a half percent of M. Let's redo what we just did here, but not in a babyish way, because what I just did here in a babyish way explaining every single step, that's very tiring. It's very annoying. Let's do it like an adult, okay? Let's start the story. Let's, let's multiply both sides by uh, uh, 4. So when we do that, you have to understand there's a 4 here, and that goes against this one. And it's going to become 1000, it's become 250. There we go, you see? Now let's divide top and bottom by 25. 250 has 10, 25, 37 has 125. After we take away 25 from 37, we have a remainder of 12. 12 goes joins the 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 525. I did it. I did it again. I explained everything. I was trying to avoid it. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. End up with third. There we go. Now we know. Now we know. And let's bring let's bring the m down here. So we know n divided by m equals 3 over 2. That's it, we are done almost. Question was how much is how much is the question was how much is 12 times this quantity? How much is 12 times that quantity? So let's multiply this side by 12. Let's multiply that side by 12. I'm going to put that 10 over here so we can keep it separate. So the question was how much is 12 times n over 5? We know n over 5 is 3 over 2. We need the 12 times this, so we are done. The answer is 18. 3 times 6. The answer is 18. 12 times n over n over m is, two, is 18. It's to 128. One hundred twenty-eight is a bloody silly problem. It's just too silly. Too silly. I don't know why it's here. It says Joe grew in height. Joe grew in height by one inch. The problem goes on to say that Joe grew by one inch in in the last year. We are further told that Sally grew two hundred percent more, 200% more than Joe did. Question is, how many inches did Sally grow? But it's just too damn silly. This guy grew by one inch and she grew 200% more. 100% 100 of 100 is 1. 200% of 1 would be 2. She grew by 3 inches, obviously. She grew by 3 inches. All of that writing, all of that writing for nothing. 129. It says table shows partial results. of surveys of a survey. They did some survey and they go on to tell us that the table shows partial result. Now usually, typically in the exam, they don't underline words. This particular time they did underline it. It's not capitalized, I put it in capital letter, but it is underlined. It's a partial result. We have to 
pay attention to it. It says, it goes to say, which one of six promotional techniques techniques influence consumers decision consumers buying decisions okay and here are the, here are the thing it says it says what fraction said either coupons or displays store displays I'm I'm trying to save some time here by not writing the whole thing but if I don't write the whole thing it's not making sense here so a survey was done how many people were in the survey it doesn't matter they were presented with six categories six promotional techniques the table that we see is not going to have six categories because it's a partial table it says of the six promotional categories which one influence consumer decisions or rather this is a continuation the table shows partial results of a survey comma comma which one which in which one of the six in which one of the six promotional techniques influence consumers decision end of the sentence this is one whole sentence okay table shows partial results of a survey in which one of the promotional techniques influence one of the six promotional techniques influence consumer decision our job is to tell them what fraction of the people, what fraction of the consumer said that their decision to purchase this particular product was influenced either by having gotten coupons or by looking at the store display as they, as they walked in. Let's look at the numbers now. Again, you will see it's all of this first for very little thing here. So here, here are the ads, it's 35%, coupons, 22%, displays 18% and finally they were given samples 15% they were given samples and that having gotten the sample influenced their decision to buy this particular product the very first thing we need to do is to remind ourselves that this is a partial result it does not represent 100% of the answers so first thing we need to do is figure out what percentage does it represent. It's not 100%. You will see in a second. Let's find out. 5 plus 5 is 10 and 2 is 10 plus 20. 0, carry 2, 5. This is 5 and 4. You see it's only 90%. And our job is to find out that of the survey that was done, the fraction that we're looking for, fraction that we're looking for is either coupon or store display as as a fraction out of the result that are presented to us and that's what it is and if you understand that part it's actually a very straightforward thing coupon and display oh they're right here coupon and display is 22 percent 22 percent and 18 percent together 22 plus 18 is 40 percent there you go it's just 40 percent it's just 40 percent out of 90 percent question what what fraction does it represent it represents four ninth four ninth that's all four out of every nine people four out of every nine people said that they were influenced by uh, uh, by either having gotten the coupon or by looking at the display on the on the on the floor of the of the store as they walked in and that's all that was the end of that page we're not going to start a new page We'll meet again tomorrow as usual and we'll continue from where we left off yesterday in the data sufficiency problems. All right. Again, if you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kishwaniprep, kishwaniprep at iCloud.com. All right. Bye now.